Hi guys, Micro here. This is my 1 to 99 summoning guide and I wanted to release this as a lot of you wanted to see this one. And I've tried to give as much variation to level in summoning as possible in this guide. I'm going to cover the fast methods and the cheap methods and give my opinion as we go along. There will be timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a specific part. So if you're already level 50 you can skip in the description to where I'm talking about things for level 50 plus. Just makes it easier to navigate through this video. So let's get into the video. Just some information before we start the video. In this video I will not be commenting on the pouches that require obsidian or talon beast charms. I know they give really good experience and they can be a very cheap and cost effective way of leveling summoning. But the obsidian charms and the talon beast charms take a very long time to get. Not to mention abyssal charms and things like that as well that I will not talk about. All of the secondary charms that take a long time to farm will be skipped in this video. I will only be focusing and commenting on the secondaries that can be bought and used effectively and easily off of the Grand Exchange. You're going to waste a lot of time farming the charms when you could just be making money for summoning anyway. It's also important to note that blue charms are not good at early levels. The bonus you get at early levels from using blue charms over other charms is very, very minuscule. But when you get to higher levels, you get such a big bonus for using blue charms, so I will not be including any blue charm methods until level 66. It would be very important for you guys to save them until then. Summoning is expensive. But remember, the pouches sell back well because of invention. So the prices and the GP per XP in this video is calculated as if you're going to go to the Grand Exchange and sell your pouches back. This means the GP per XP on some of these is actually really, really cheap. So now that's covered, we can get started. There's not that many useful items in this video. There's actually only two that I'm going to speak about. The first one is the Shaman's Outfit. The Shaman's Outfit is acquired via the Treasure Hunter or can now be obtained from the Box of Summoning Ingredients that you get as a reward from Familiarization, which is a weekly D&D. This then makes it available for Iron Men now as well. Iron Men can do Familiarization and have a chance of getting this awesome Shaman Outfit. Each piece grants a 1% bonus summoning experience when worn. You also get a 1% extra increase in experience for the full set. So when all 5 pieces are worn, you get a total bonus of 6% experience. You can also get a Shaman's Headdress add-on. This is only obtainable via the Treasure Hunter, and this upgrades your headdress. Once your headdress is upgraded, there is a 5% chance of saving a charm with this item worn. So not only will you get your 6% bonus experience, you also have a 5% chance of saving a charm. The headdress add-on is absolutely OP. The next useful item is absolutely fantastic. This useful item is Spirit Gems. These are pocket slot items that give a chance of saving a charm when worn while creating summoning pouches. The first gem is the Spirit Sapphire. It has a 10% chance to save a charm and lasts for 10 charges. So once it's saved 10 charms, it will be destroyed. The Spirit Emerald is 20% chance with 20 charges. Ruby is 30% with 30 charges and it scales all the way up to an onyx which is 60% and has 60 charges. So what you can do with these gems, when you accumulate them as drops, you can forge up three of a gem to one of the next tier. So say you had three spirit sapphires, you could then make those three spirit sapphires into one spirit emerald. This is pretty good for the low tier, but I would never ever consider doing three Spirit Dragonstones into one Spirit Onyx because you lose so many charges doing so and you already have a really high percent chance. This is where the combine ability comes in. You can combine multiple of one gem to give it more charges. So if I combined three Spirit Onyxes together, I could have 180 charges just on one Spirit Onyx because all three are combined into one now. It works with every single gem and so does forging except for Onyx obviously. I probably would stop forging my gems around Emerald or Ruby depending on how many you have. Because if you think of it this way, if you forge a Spirit Diamond into a Spirit Dragonstone, you're essentially turning a 40% chance and 120 charges into a 50% chance and 50 charges. This means you're losing 70 charges just for 10% chance increase. Losing this many charges just doesn't seem worth it to me. You've also got to remember when it saves a charm, 
it also has a chance to then re-save the charm afterwards. So it's slightly higher chance than the chances listed here because you also have the chance to save it on the one you did save. All in all, absolute incredible items. I would personally forge up to Ruby and then combine the diamonds, dragonstones and onyxes together and use those. When starting off summoning, you're going to probably have to use the Tavali Obelisk. So you run from Tavali Bank to the Obelisk. You can use Surge to speed it up a little bit if you have that spell. Once you're at the Obelisk, just click Infuse Pouch, press Space and it will make all your pouches. You can then use your Home Teleport to go back to Tavali. If you have quick teleports, it will be super fast to get to the bank. And if you don't, it's still faster than running back and it saves you some run energy. In this method we're going to be using the Spirit Kaya. This means you need a teleport back from the altar. You can use a Tockle Zol, you can use something like an Attune Crystal Teleport Seed, a Ring of Duelin, a Glory, anything that allows you to teleport back to a bank. All you got to do is summon the Spirit Kaya, you interact with it and you click teleport. It will teleport you to this place in the Piscatorius Hunting Ground. Once you're here look for the trap door, open up the trap door and climb down it. And there's an obelisk right here. Infuse your pouches like normal. Once you've infused your pouches, you can use your teleport to get to a bank. Whatever teleport you chose will be fine. Once you're at the bank, you can use your preset, reload everything out. And then it's just repeating the process. Talking to the kayak, teleporting, going down the trap door and infusing your pouches. This is faster than the Tavali method, but it requires a spirit kayak to do. And a spirit kayak requires 57 summoning. So once you hit 57 summoning, I would do this over the Tavali method until you get to Prif. Before we continue with the methods, I just want to mention the Amlod voice of Seren. The voice of Seren changes every hour in Prifdenus. This means that you need the Plague's End quest in order to access this buff. The Amlod voice of Seren helps boost summoning. The voice gives 20% more base summoning experience from making pouches and scrolls during the duration and the voice lasts one hour. It also allows you to create 12 scrolls per pouch instead of the regular 10 scrolls. This is perfect and should be used as much as possible because not only do you get more experience, you also save money and time. Getting more base experience per pouch you make allows you to save money and get a lower GP per XP rate. As it boosts base experience, this also stacks up to 40% on double experience weekend. A lot of people save up their charms and save them for every double experience weekend because of this. Being able to get 40% experience on double experience weekend in summoning is absolutely crazy. Not to mention all of the other boosts you will have on top of it. This is what I do personally. I save up all of my summoning supplies for double experience weekend and then hammer it out then. This buff is incredible. Use it as much as possible. There's an item that's super helpful when doing summoning in Prif. It's called an Attune Crystal Teleport Seed. What you need is the Eyes of Glorifier to be completed. You need 85 smithing, you need a Crystal Teleport Seed and 4000 Harmonic Dust. When you sing this Attuned Crystal Teleport Seed, what it does is give you unlimited charges on a Teleport Seed. This means that you can constantly teleport to the Ifal Clan. This really really helps while doing summoning on Amlod Hour, as you can run over to the Obelisk with this Attuned Teleport Seed in your pocket slot and just instantly teleport back. This speeds up runs so dramatically, it's amazing. You want to utilize as many runs you can do in an hour during an Amlod hour, so this helps dramatically. You can also use the mobile perk alongside this for maximum trips an hour. When doing your summoning in Prif, you just need to run from the bank. You can use Surge to speed it up. When you get to Obelisk, make your pouches. Use your Crystal Teleport Seed to teleport back to Ifal. If you don't have Crystal Teleport Seed, then you'll have to run back. Then you just use your preset, run again, and repeat this process over and over again until Amlod Hour is done. Make sure you're using Amlod Hour as much as possible for the 20% experience buff. Summoning has a really easy start. From levels 1 to 4 you want to do the Wolf Whistle quest which will give you 276 summoning experience for level 4 and 275 gold charms to start you off. Those starting gold charms can really help as well. This quest is definitely worth doing just for the charms even if it's not for the XP. From levels 4 to 16 you can do the Dreadfowl Pouches. These pouches give 9.3 XP each as the base experience, anything extra will boost it so if you have the outfit, 
the avatar bar for anything like that will also boost this 9.3 experience. Each pouch requires a raw chicken and 8 shards to actually make. You will have to make 266 pouches for level 16, so those starting gold charms are perfect for this. From levels 16 to 28 we're carrying on with the gold charms and we're doing granite crab pouches. These now give 21.6 XP each as base XP. Each pouch requires an iron ore and 7 shards. You will have to make 375 pouches for level 28 doing it this way. Now we're moving on to some green charms and from levels 28 to 33 we want to do compost mound pouches. These now give 49.8 XP each as base XP. Each pouch requires a bucket of compost and 47 spirit shards. You will have to make 150 pouches for level 33. Continuing the green charms from levels 33 to 40 we want to do beaver pouches. These give 57.6 XP each as base XP. Each pouch requires a willow log and 72 shards. You will have to make 398 pouches for level 40. From levels 40 to 46 you can do macaw pouches now. These pouches give 72.4 XP each. Each pouch requires a clean guam and 78 spirit shards. You will then have to make 371 pouches for level 46 doing it this way. So this is where you start getting the choice on which colour charms you want to use and what method you want to pick that suits you the best. From levels 46 to 47 you can carry on with your macaw pouches. You would need 128 of them pouches for level 47 and these pouches cost around 6 to 7 GP and XP. On the other hand you can start doing Pyre Lord pouches. These give 202.4 XP each and use Crimson Charms which provide a lot more experience than green. Each pouch requires a tinder box and 111 spirit shards. You will have to make 36 pouches for level 47 and this would turn out to be 4 to 4.5 4 GP and XP. So they're cheaper and faster but then again crimson charms are normally quite longer to farm than greens. From levels 47 to 52 you can now do magpie pouches. These magpie pouches give 83.2 XP each. They require a gold ring and 88 shards. You would have to make 584 pouches for level 52 and they're around 9 to 10 GP and XP so they're pretty expensive. Or you can continue doing your Pyre Lord pouches, getting your 202.4 XP each, you would have to do 240 pouches for level 52. Again these are 4 to 4.5 GP and XP. So if you have a lot of Crimsons I'd advise doing the Pyre Lords. If you don't have many Crimsons you may want to do the Magpies. From levels 52 to 56 you now have 3 choices. You can continue doing the Magpie pouches and you would have to make 834 pouches at 9 to 10 GP and XP. You can also continue to do the Pyre Lord pouches you would have to make 299 pouches at 4 to 4.5 GP and XP. Alternatively now you can do Spirit Terror Bird pouches. These give 68.4 XP each which is the lowest out of all of them but they're very very good. They require raw bird meat and 12 spirit shards to make and they give you 10 to 15 GP and XP profit. So you're going to make a lot of money making these pouches. The perks of gold charms is that you normally make a bit of money while using them. You would have to make 883 pouches for level 56 though, which means it will take the longest out of all of them. From levels 56 to 61 you can now do ibis pouches. You can also do bloated leeches with crimsons, but the raw beef never ever buys and you have to overpay so dramatically to make them. They're definitely not worth doing compared to Pyre Lords. Tinder boxes are very very easy to get. So these Ibises give 98.8 XP each. Each pouch requires a harpoon and 109 shards. You will have to make 1197 pouches for level 61 summoning and this turns out to be 8 to 9 GP and XP. Greens are pretty bad in general as charms, but it's better to use them early and save as many crimsons and blues as you can and then just stop using them in the future. You can also continue doing some Pyre Lord pouches. Like I said, the bloated leeches are just not worth it. You would have to make 585 Pyre Lord pouches for level 61. These are again 4 to 4.5 GP and XP. And alternatively, you can continue making Spirit Terror Bird pouches you would have to make 1,729 pouches for level 61, but you're going to make that 10 to 15 GP and XP profit while doing so. Definitely a good time to use up your gold charms. 
from level 61 to 66, most of the pathway stays the same except for you can do smoke devils now. You can continue doing the Ibis pouches which is 8 to 9 GPN XP and you would have to make 1964 pouches for 66. The new smoke devil pouches give 268 XP each, they require ground goat horns and 141 shards. You would only have to make 724 pouches for level 66 so this would be a very quick way to get there and it would be 6 to 7 GPN XP. If you have quite a lot of gold charms you could continue doing some spirit terror bird pouches. You would need to make 2836 pouches for level 66 but you would make a lot of money in profit doing so. From level 66 to 67 everything changes. You can make mithril minotaur pouches with blue charms. I've taken green charms away completely because they're too expensive at this level and I don't feel like it's worth it including them in any way of leveling because they're just going to rinse your wallet and you're not going to get much experience. These mithril minotaurs give 580.8 .8 experience each as blue charms are absolutely amazing. Each pouch requires a mithril bar and 152 spirit shards. You would only have to make 90 pouches for level 67. These are 8 to 9 GP and XP. Next up with the Crimsons we have Stranger Plant Pouches. These are 281.6 XP each. You require a bag plant and 128 shards to make it and you would have to make 184 pouches for level 67. This turns out to be 6 to 7 GPN XP. With the gold charms you can now start making Barker Toad pouches. They're the fastest XP for gold charms and they give 87 XP each but because they require a swamp toad and 11 spirit shards they're actually a loss. You would still have to make 595 pouches for level 67 but you would only lose 2 to 3 GPN XP. The Barker Toad pouches is what some people like to spend their gold charms on as it's very fast XP for gold charms but it costs a little bit of money. Personally I like to make money while using up my gold charms so I'd rather do a Spirit Terror Bird or a War Tortoise. I'll speak about War Tortoise in just a second. From levels 67 to 74 you can continue your Mithril Minotaur pouches. You would need 945 pouches for level 74. If you continued your Stranger Plant pouches you would be able to make make 1948 pouches to get to 74. As for gold charms, if you don't want to spend money making Barker Toads, you can make War Tortoise pouches. These give 58.6 experience each and they require a tortoise shell and one spirit shard to make. You will have to make 9358 pouches for level 74. So you have to use up so so many gold charms whenever you're using them but you do make money doing so if you're not using the Barker Toads. This is why I kinda like gold charms as you can make a bit of money doing them. Even if you're not getting much experience you're still getting some and you're making some money. This turns out to be 14 to 18 GP per XP in profit. That's a lot of money to make from summoning and the XP you get alongside it is not too bad. But once you get past this level I wouldn't really advise doing gold charms if you want experience. You can do them here and there for money but they wouldn't really be a good viable method to train up the skill. So I advise doing the war tortoises when you have some spare gold charms for money and a little bit of experience but I wouldn't really do golds for any other reason and I would stick to doing blues and crimsons from now on. From level 74 to 79 I would not advise doing anything except for granite lobsters. These give 325.6 XP each and each pouch requires granite of any size. 500 grams is the best because it's the cheapest. You can always buy 1kg blocks and cut them into 500 grams as well. That also works. You also need 166 spirit shards alongside the granite to make this pouch. You will have to make 2158 pouches for level 79 and it turns out to be only 2 to 3 GPN XP. These pouches are pretty fast experience and really really good GPN XP. In my opinion these granite lobsters are the best pouches until you can get to pack yaks and pack yaks are at 96. This makes these an absolute beast. At levels 79 to 85 you have another choice. You can do fire or moss titan pouches which require blue charms. These both give 695.2 XP each as base experience. The fire titans require a fire talisman 
and the Moss Titans require an Earth Talisman. They also require 198 or 202 Spirit Shards. You will have to make 2100 pouches for level 85. These turn out to be 3 to 5 GPN XP. And again, these are my favourite way of training even at 99 summoning. These pouches are absolutely incredible for experience and so so cheap at the same time. Blue chumps are normally really fast but really expensive, but these make it really fast and not too expensive. Depending on which one's cheaper, the fire or the earth talisman, is which one you do. So if the earth talisman works out to be cheaper than the fire talismans, you might as well make moss giants over fire as they're the exactly same XP. Alternatively, if you wanted to carry on with some crimson charms, you can do the granite lobsters that I spoke about earlier. You would need to make 4,484 pouches for 85 summoning. Again, granite lobsters are 2 to 3 GP and XP. You get an additional choice at 85 summoning. You can continue your fire or moss titan pouches and you would have to make 2,279 pouches for 89. Again, these are 3 to 5 GP and XP. With your crimsons, you have two options. The first option is personally how I would do it and that's continuing your granite lobster pouches. These would be 2 to 3 GPN XP and you would have to make 4,864 of them for 89. In addition, you can now make Swamp Titan pouches. You can get around 50 experience more by making Swamp Titans. Swamp Titans are 373.6 XP each. They require a Swamp Blizzard and 150 shards to make. You would have to make 4,240 pouches for level 89. But the downside of these is that they're 10 to 13 GPN XP, which is super, super expensive. They're around four times the price of Granite Lobsters, and they only provide 50 experience more. This just means that you would need 600 more Crimson Charms to actually make the Granite Lobsters than you would the Swamp Titans. I would gladly take that money that you save making Granite Lobster pouches and have to farm those 600 extra Crimson Charms than spend four times the amount. I just feel like a lot of people tell you to make Swamp Titan pouches just because they're fast, but just because they're fast doesn't mean that they're a good way to train. They're so expensive, I feel like Granite Lobsters trump them easy. At levels 89 to 96, you get another choice, but with blue charms instead now, and again, I honestly do not think it's worth it. You can continue your fire and moss titan pouches, which means you would need 6,966 pouches for level 96. This turns out again to be 3 to 5 GPN XP. On the other hand, you can start doing geyser titan pouches. These pouches give just under 90 experience more than the Fire and Moss Titans. These give 783.2 experience each. But each pouch you make requires a Water Talisman and 222 shards. Water Talismans are much more expensive than the Fire and the Earth Talismans. You will have to make 6183 pouches for level 96. This is only around 13% less than what you would need to make in Fire and Moss Titans. So if you want to be 13% faster, you can do these. This turns out to be 8 to 10 GPN XP. So these are anywhere between 2 to 3 times the price of Fire and Moss Titans. I honestly don't think it's worth spending 2 to 3 times the amount just for 90 experience. It just doesn't feel worth it to me. I can understand you wanting to get the most out of your blue charms, but it just feels like a waste of money. I'd rather go farm some more blue charms and some extra money at the same time and then just continue making some moss giants. You're going to save a lot of money in the long run by doing these over geyser. But if you really wanted to get the most experience out of your charms, geyser titans are the best experience in the game. On the other hand, you could do granite lobster pouches with your crimson charms. You would have to make 14,872 pouches, so it's quite a lot more than the blue charms just over double but it's still really good experience and still a very good way to train because you're going to get way more crimsons than blues and again they're only two to three gpn xp which is always super cheap and this is why i think granite lobsters are so so good until you can do pack yaks and finally for levels 96 to 99 you could do your fire and moss titans you would need to make 4819 fire or moss titans for level 99 these will be 3 to 5 GPN XP. On the other hand, you can get 13% faster experience by doing Geyser Titan pouches. You would need to do 4,278 pouches for level 99. 
Like I said before, I don't warrant the 2 to 3 times the price tag just for 13% faster experience, but if you wanted the fastest experience in the game, go ahead and do Geyser Titans. And lastly, upgrading your Crimson Charms, you can now do Pack Yak Pouches. These give 422.4 experience each. Each pouch requires a Yak Hide and 211 Spirit Shards. You will have to make 7,931 pouches for level 99, which is now just under half of what you would have to make with blues, so now it's got considerably faster with pack yaks. This turns out to be the same experience as the granite lobsters at 2 to 3 GP and XP. Pack yaks and fire titans are my two favourite ones to do. I still do fire titans and pack yaks every single double experience weekend for some awesome XP. Make sure you're utilising your amlod hour as well. That's also really, really useful when doing summoning. Good luck with your 99. Hope this has helped give you an insight. Thank you for watching. Give the video a like if you enjoyed. Hopefully it helped you with the summoning gains and just learning the skill a bit better and what to choose. Subscribe if you're new for future content like this. Feel free to join my friends chat micro in game if you fancy to chat to me or anyone else in there. Goblin Slayers with a Z is my clan. It's open to everyone and anyone so feel free to ask for an invite there. Discord link will be in the description if you fancy chatting on voice communication and my Twitter link will be in the description as well if you fancy following me there. And until next time, see ya.